Hey, what's going on everyone? It's been a while. Uh, we got some uh, cool apps coming out right now. We got one called dronehacks.com that I wanted to share off with you guys a little bit. This is a new piece of software that allows you to modify your aircraft. It's got firmware flashing, parameter editing, and a lot of really cool things. I definitely rec recommend you guys check it out. Supports most of the DJI consumer aircraft. That's the list you can see there. Uh, one of the really cool things is it's not just a really nice app, but they've got a really cool website too. If you go to their website, dronehacks.com slash birdmap, you can check out the bird map here. You can see all the different aircraft and you can see exactly what mods are available per firmware version. Uh, load up the website here, go ahead and pick a Mavic Pro. You can see all the firmware listed. Once you select the firmware over there on the right, you can see the different hacks, the different mods you can do. So they make it super easy and simple. Uh, you can see something very similar to this within the app UI. Um, so you can check this out and you can see, you know, what aircraft do I have uh, and pick your thing. So uh, the app has four different licenses. The free one allows firmware flashing and changing the parameters, which is what most people need. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, check out dronehacks.com. Uh, you need to sign up for an account that'll get you a license going. Uh, once you get an account, you can go into the app, log in, and then you can play around with your aircraft. The license seems to validate against both the account and the aircraft. So um, that's why you got to create an account. Uh, if you need to, go ahead and use your, your test email. Uh, they've got versions for Windows, Linux, and hopefully Mac OS will come soon. To download it, just go to their website slash download and then pick the instance that you want, whether it's Windows, Linux, or uh, as soon as Mac comes out, the Mac version. I think a lot of people are going to be excited for a, a Mac piece of software that allow them to easily configure their, their drone. So go ahead and download that. Uh, once you've done that, power on your aircraft, plug it in, uh, and then open up that app. Uh, we'll take a quick look at the, the user interface. On the top left, you got the aircraft information. Next to that, you got the account information, kind of a cool informational console, um, some tabs there in the middle for different options. And then down on the bottom, you've got the bird map. And in the middle there, you got the wizard showing some of your, uh, your firmware information. So pretty easy UI. The bird map on the bottom is really cool because again, just like the website, you're gonna be able to take a look at the different aircraft, pick the version you want, and then boom, right there, you can see the mods that you're gonna get out of it. So there, there's no surprises, no questions of what's gonna work versus uh, what's not gonna work. Uh, in this case, the guys hooked me up with a pro license. And so I'm able to check out pretty much everything, uh, which is really nice. Um, but the bird map here, again, you can pick your aircraft and you can see what version and you pick the mod. So you know what you're getting into. You can pick the right license that matches that particular setup. Now, one of the cool things I really like about this app is the wizard. Um, so basically it's a guided process that'll help you easily manage your, your firmware mods. Uh, there's two flows. One is the firmware flow, and I can't spell, uh, and the other is the hacks and then the slash custom firmware. Um, so I'll take a look at the firmware flashing first. Um, after everything's all loaded up, you can click the start wizard button and then go ahead and click flash firmware and then uh, download whatever firmware you need to through the, the dank downloader tool. Uh, load that firmware up and then flash it. Uh, the process should take, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up in the video here. Uh, but this is pretty cool. Um, it's got some checks in it so that you can't uh, screw things up. Um, I don't know what everything it's got in there, but it's pretty smart so you can only really go the direction that you need to to achieve your goals. Um, so once it's done there, you can go ahead and hit next. You can close out uh, through the wizard flow right after flashing the firmware. It'll allow you to uh, choose those different mods or flash the custom firmware. I'm just going to start from the beginning here uh, just to kind of show you those steps. So if you choose hack your drone, you can choose all the different unlocks, FCC mode, boost mode, stock mode. Um, those are different power transmit on the remote control. Uh, I'm not really quite sure what signal FCC boost is. Uh, you should check out the website uh, to be able to, to understand that better. And then you've also got an option there for the custom flight controller. Um, so upon hitting apply on this, it'll do what you want. So if you checked uh, FCC mode, it'll install that on the aircraft. If you checked custom flight controller, it'll install that on the aircraft. I went ahead and uh, sped it up here to get it going a little bit quicker for the video here. And then once it's done here, go ahead and click OK. So again, it's you know simple. It works really well. Uh, that's exactly what you want on a tool like this to work is just simple. So that's the wizard. Uh, this is the custom flight controller section. 
it's pretty much the same as what we just looked at in the wizard, just a different page. So if you go ahead and hit apply, uh, it basically intelligently detects the version of aircraft that you're on and then it loads the right custom flight controller. Now this allows modding of height removal and no fly zone removal on the newest aircraft firmware version, um, depending upon what aircraft you have. Uh, and so that's pretty cool. We've been limited on a lot of the mods in those where we can't get at parameters on the new firmware version. So the custom flight controller is a huge win. It's super simple, super straightforward. It's really nice. Now, one of the things is the FCC and boost mods. So you can change from CE mode to FCC mode to boost mode. And as seen in the screen there, it basically changed the, uh, the transmit power of your remote control so that you can get better distance. So a lot of the guys in Europe or Asia want to flip over to FCC mode to get the, uh, the higher wattage. And then guys also want to just be able to flip over to boost mode that turns it up to, I think, 1.8 watts. Uh, and pushes the remote controller at its its highest potential. If you ever need to reverse this, you can want to just come back in here uh, and just flash it back to stock mode and that'll completely change it back as well. Now you'll see there to the right, there's a button for enable ADB that opens up ADB access. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now. Um, should you need it, uh, definitely check that out. If you know what that is, you probably know what I mean. All right, this is regular firmware flashing, same page. Go ahead and choose firmware, pick your file, whatever file you downloaded from Dink Downloader. Uh, load that up and it'll flash that firmware for you. Again, I really like this because it's very simple. It's very straightforward. It just works. Go ahead and hit okay when it's done there. All right, this is my favorite part. So this is the hacking parameters. So this is where you can actually uh, change the different flight controller parameters for speed and whatnot. So it'll uh, load up the parameters and then you got some sliders here. So on the top section, you see sport mode. You've got the uh, the tilt, you know, the vertical up, down, the ascent up, down. Uh, the next section below, we got the normal mode parameters. So that's kind of cool where it's got sport mode and normal mode separated there. So you can be able to easily manipulate those. I hope in coming versions that there will be some additional options here for like uh, removing the height limit on some of the older firmware versions, changing the battery type, maybe um, a slider for the wind warnings, because I know a lot of people like to get rid of those. Um, but uh, overall, this is really cool. It's really nice, it's simple. You just slide it up to what you need to, and then you hit the right parameters to drone button on the bottom down there, and you're good to go. Now, speaking of that, if you look on the bottom, there's a section for change parameters. Uh, we'll take a look at that here in a second. But really what that allows you to do is to be able to export or import parameters. So you can save or back up your settings. Or if you've got friends or people in the community that you want to share them with, you can be able to easily do that. Um, so if I export the parameters here, it exports it in a, uh, a DHP file, which is basically just a JSON file that shows particularly uh, really just all the information within the file for all the different parameters. Probably don't need to understand that too much other than it allows you to back up and share those settings, which is really nice. So this is what maps to all those settings. And then this is what it's gonna re-upload back up to the aircraft. And so again, you can export those, you can import them as well. So again, if you need to make backups or you want to share with people in the community, if you found some good settings, that makes it really nice to be able to, to share that. It does take a minute to, uh, to import some of those parameters. I think there's like 12 to 1500 of them. So give it a second. That uh, info log on the top will tell you when it's done. You can also set default values. So this will basically reset everything back to stock. I do believe that if you have the custom flight controller, it should leave those settings as is. Those are gonna be basically some hard-coded parameters that can't be changed through these. So you, you should be good there. All right, again, resetting back to defaults looks to take a couple seconds. When it's done, it'll say it's finished and all those default values have been written. And then again, all the sliders, everything should be back to stock to where it needs to be. 
If you go into advanced parameters, this is kind of cool. This basically allows you to search for and look up any parameter within the list. So if there's anything on the sliders that you're looking for that you want to be able to change, you can basically just type in that search box, change it, change the slider there, and then there's a button below for save parameter. Uh, so I've been doing this myself to change the battery type, um, change the wind warnings, some of the the details on the battery to force land and things. Uh, I've been changing those. Um, I assume that you could probably change other things like the setting for being able to turn your motors on when inverted, uh, maybe being able to change the, the sport mode switch, different things like that. You could search through there. Uh, I definitely recommend guys check out the wiki at, what is it, uh, uh, dgi.retroroms.com uh, that's a really good wiki we got a lot of great information a lot of parameters that you can check out in there I'll put that link in the, uh, the comments all right so it went ahead and it saved those parameters and it wrote them to the aircraft so again this is pretty sweet um, just really the flexibility of being able to quickly change the uh, the sport mode the, the normal mode and then being able to get in here and you know customize and change any other parameter that I want been able to easily and quickly you know drag and drop the slider that's really nice so you can see here I'm just checking out some different parameters see what I can see again once you uh, change something with the slider if you want that change to persist go ahead and hit the uh, the save parameter button down below if you close this little uh, window screen without doing that then it won't save it so make sure you do that but this is pretty cool you can uh, go through and you can basically search up whatever different parameters you might want um, you can look for different keywords different things if you're looking to test or different things um, I don't know the sky's the limit and that's one of the other cool things is you can test and you can play around uh, share your parameters with other folk and you can get feedback from those in the community all right enough of that we'll go ahead and save those parameters and persist them to the drone And then I think we're pretty much coming close to the end, you guys. Again, this is a new piece of software from dronehacks.com. Uh, the author that wrote this is a pretty well-known guy. He's pretty respectful uh, and well-known within the community for his contributions. Um, and so I think it's a, a great addition to the community. Really, any more additions that we can have for being able to, to do modding and you know tweaks on our aircraft is fantastic. Um, we always want to fly responsibly, obviously, um, but I really am a big advocate of, you know, free information and freeing up our aircraft. Um, you know, I think you guys are responsible people and we should be able to, to do it responsibly. So it's a great piece of software. I definitely recommend you check it out, uh, buy a license, invest in it, uh, invest back in the community. And then uh, guys like this keep making great apps. Thanks for watching, everybody. You take care.